G'day. Heaps of news tonight on AI. We have Bard from Google. We have uh, some fun to have with prompt engineering. Microsoft have made GitHub check-ins more secure. And we have a few sparkles from the Microsoft Teams team. All this and more. I'm Adam Kogan. Let's get into it. G'day team, Adam Kogan here for the SSW Tech News. We've got a lot on. Now, the first news that I'm going to talk about is everyone's talking about prompt engineering. You've got blogs here from Microsoft, you've got lots of material from everyone. Here's the, the begin, beginning of this whole world of prompt engineering where you must know context and you must know what the task is. So for example, if you say summarize this for a second grade student, and here's the paragraph about Jupiter and the solar system. This is the task. This is the context. And uh, it gets a lot more uh, heavy than that, but that's a nice start. And Microsoft are giving you lots and lots of tips on this. We also have a bunch of SSW rules on getting prompt engineering right. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a rule here that you can read, but probably more importantly is this cheat sheet. So we have this cheat sheet here, and it's quite a nice little cheat sheet. In fact, we have it printed and put into every bathroom in all the offices at SSW. Uh, so while you're in the bathroom, you can be reading about giving ChatGPT a role, uh, the do's and don'ts, just the basics, chaining your prompts together, and structuring what we call a super prompt, putting it all together. So role, result, context, intent, and constraint. Uh, now, that's just for everybody should be doing this every day, I think. Uh, now, if you're a developer, you're going to want to know a little bit more than that. Uh, so we have another cheat sheet, which is the dev edition. And that is writing code, debugging code and testing, understanding code when you're reading someone else's code or maybe your own code if you've forgotten it, and documenting code. Writing instructions, writing readmes is a thing of the past these days. Uh, we also have refactoring code, code reviews, and tips. All right, so plenty there. Hope you, hope you enjoy it. Now, the next piece of news is my, Google have been forced to uh, release their BARD. We knew about it. The release, the launch didn't go very well, but getting it in our hands has been a bit of fun. Now, my first impression, I've been using this a bit, is BARD has a great first impression. It seems awesome but it's worse than ChatGPT in almost every way. There's a few nice things that it does, and I particularly like this one. Uh, this doesn't work at the moment, but it's on their uh, advertising, but it will be cool. Why are we using Google instead of ChatGPT for everything all the time? Well, Google says this. The major difference is integration with other apps. It's unable to integrate with other application or softwares. Uh, that's not very good English uh, by this person. Even if they have a similar parent company. Okay, now, uh, this is not the reason why people are using Google. It's because uh, ChatGPT and BARD have been built on a data set that is 2021, so it's two years old. Uh, but that answer it has changed because we have this news. So. I will tell you, at the moment, uh, this is what we get today, which is, you know, if I say summarize this URL, it cannot do this. This is one of the things I hate about um, GPT 3.5. You should always be using 4. GPT 3.5 is a liar and uh, make-believe. Make, make so I can give it a URL. It won't read it. It'll just make stuff up, and you'll think it's accurate, but it's not. Um, we now have this. OpenAI, which is ChatGPT, connects it to the internet. So if you come down here, you'll see that you can now ask who won the Oscar this year, and it will give you an answer. Okay, that's awesome. And there is a nice little video here that kind of walks you through this, uh, what this new feature is. I'm going to tell you anyway. So let's just say you had a long page like this and you don't want to read every single one, or you've just turned up to a meeting and everyone said, did you read that uh, long PDF, or did you read that, read that uh, New York Times article? 
You go, bugger, I haven't. So you could go in here and just do this. Now, w to make this feature work, you have to come down here, see, see the uh, settings, click the little three dots, click settings, and then come over here to beta features and turn this guy on. I'll just refresh this just to make sure it's there. Uh, you've got to choose GPT-4. Now, this is a funny UI here. Uh, now, it's not really picking that up for some reason, so I have to come back here. I have to come to settings. I have to come here and then click it on again. Okay? I'm sure they'll sort these problems out. And now I'll just refresh this, and you'll see that uh, this will get a little bit better. Now, I haven't... I haven't completely turned this on. You have to be super smart to turn this on. You have to hover over it, come down here, and then click that. Uh, then you can come back hover, and you'll see it's turned on. And then you can give it commands like, you know, uh, let's summarize this page and be brief. Now, it, um, it will then go off to the web. It'll tell you what it's doing, et cetera, et cetera. Now, it'll take a little while, so I won't wait. Um, but you can give it things like this. Like, you can't do this today. Uh, did Italy ban GPT? Now, I have to check first that that's turned on, see that feature's turned on. Now, if you asked this in the old days, like, you know, like a week ago, that would say, hey, what's going on here? It wouldn't have known about this. Now it has to browse the internet to find out what the story is. It'll go off, and then hopefully it will come back and say, I found a link. It will tell me whether they did or they didn't. Now, if this is super smart, it'll say, yes, it, banned, it did um, ban it temporarily, and then it's re-enabled it in Italy because they realized what a disadvantage it was for the whole country not to be able to do it. So yes, it banned it. It was the first Western country to do so. The Italian data watchdog did it with everybody up in arms and now they've gone and reversed it, hopefully. Now, let's go and ask the same experience to BARD. Uh, this is one of the areas that I've had better success with BARD than GPT on very recent questions. So yes, they banned uh, ChatGPT on this date. So I like this answer a bit more. And then they appealed. So anyway, that's your answer. Um, the other piece of news is that Sam Altman, he's the CEO of uh, ChatGPT or OpenAI, he is up at Congress. He is trying to encourage them to get uh, legislation put there. There's a lot of people that are uh, a, that are quite concerned about what's going to happen very quickly. Um, he, he's not being very sp specific about this, but even Elon Musk is saying we need legislation on this. I'm not sure the answer is just American legislation. I think we need a, a global body where we're all, um, you know, we're all going by a world watchdog. Um, look, no one's actually said what specific laws they should have. Um, personally, I think that it is very, very important that uh, you're not allowed to pass things off. Like, you shouldn't be allowed to put a fake there and it not to have some identifiable, this is fake. Otherwise, we're not going to know what we can trust and what we can't. Um, you know, you're not allowed to print money. Uh, why should you be allowed to do something like this? You know, it's just going to cause a whole lot of chaos. Now, uh, from Australia, we have a little bit of news from the University of New South Wales just down the road. Scientists have, have developed an AI tool to predict Parkinson's disease. So that's the, um, that's the disease that Michael J. Fox has, the uh, shaking. And uh, they have got this right, apparently, to a 90% accuracy. So not perfect, but they're using um, uh, similar... The, the similar type of AI models to predict this. And um, yeah, so obviously uh, th this stuff is happening fast. Now, we have talked in the past about how Microsoft were encouraging fluent design systems. We have never seen anything in our Windows and uh, our Visual Studio world is changing a little. So that is the new model. If you look at it, it doesn't feel that much different than before. But let's look at this a little bit more closely. See this toolbar? That's the old one. This bigger one is the newer one. So it's a little bigger, a little bit more space. Let's look at the menus. This is the old one on the left and the new one on the right. See how it's a little bit more spacious, a little larger, a little bit more readable. 
if you go down to this active uh, region styling, just look at the top part. See the old one where it's quite cramped, all the tabs? And then look down here. The new one, the tabs are a little clearer to read. Okay. Uh, let's look at the Solution Explorer. Same thing. A little bigger, a little bit clearer. So, you know, uh, that's what we've got. Uh, small changes. I think overall it will just feel a lot nicer. Getting off .NET 4.7 and getting onto .NET 7 and soon .NET 8 is really important. Uh, the .NET Upgrade Assistant is the way to go. All right, and we're using that on many projects at the moment. Uh, right now we are. So you need the .NET Upgrade Assistant in, in, installed. You need uh, automatically up, update this extension to be checked on because there's updates coming regularly. They now support .NET 8, okay. Uh, they support moving from Xamarin Forms to MAUI, Azure Functions, uh, UWP to uh, WinUI. So uh, that's pretty good. There's all the stuff there about uh, going to MAUI. And when you're in your old project, you'll see this upgrade. And when you press upgrade, you will get the up upgrade assistant. And uh, you know, then you'll keep uh, using that. We have been uh, using this with quite some success. It's helping us clean up our old projects and get it onto the new um, platform. Okay, so that's all very, very, very good. Now, let me just talk about the next pain that we've had, and that is you always must teach, especially young developers, that uh, secrets must not go in source control. Once they go in, the genie's out of the bottle, so to speak, and there's quite a bit of work that needs to go back um, because it's now gone into source into your source code. So look, you know, there's a there's a bit of a rule here on what we teach people. Most of our projects have our secrets in uh, Azure Key Vault, but there's many different ways of doing it. But that's that's uh, our favourite one. Uh, now, what has happened in this space is that GitHub have uh, made this push pr protection generally available and free. So that's this is kind of a feature that all enterprises want. They really could have charged a lot of money for this because the big guys uh, really care about this, but they've decided to give it to everyone. Now, how does it work? Well, there's a good expl explanation here. I'll just right click on here and open this GIF in a new tab. And let's just, I'll just refresh. Look down the bottom left, commit to main. Uh, then we push origin and it says, hello, what do you got? You got a secret here, this weird dialogue. If you really, really want to, uh, ignore it, you can copy this URL, go to another browser, paste the URL, say, look, it's a false positive, please just allow this, go back to where you were, uh, refresh and push origin and this time it will go through. So that's kind of how that's going to work. Uh, that's pretty awesome if you ask me. That's, that's, um, <laughs> that's a very compelling reason why you should be using GitHub. Okay, now uh, there is a a guy, um, he's from the Holland, and he uh, works for Microsoft now, and he's running a global teams hackathon, and it is based on uh, the Graph API. Now, if you're a young developer, the best way of being successful is turning up, essentially. You know, didn't Woody Allen said 80% of success is just turning up. Uh, now, if you want to do this, if you spend the day doing this, you will know a lot of stuff by the end of that day. So he's going to take you through uh, team apps development, um, you know, maximizing your Office 365 uh, investments, learning the Graph API. It's going to be pretty good. So I encourage you to do that. Now, uh, I am off to NDC. You can see my great hat here. Uh, here we go. I will be off with the Vikings uh, at NDC. It's a great, uh, it's a great conference. Uh, lots of speakers. I'll be going off with. Um, oh look, they put the best speakers on the first page. Um, I'll be going off there with JK from the Brisbane office, and it's going to be awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm going to finish with a little bit of fun. The little bit of fun is Microsoft Teams have these animated backgrounds, and today, uh, I <laughs> was on a call with a few guys. It doesn't really show you how good this is uh, with these backgrounds. And uh, I don't, I'm not even a Snapchat from the Snapchat generation. But I was having a call with 
Brady and uh, Luke, and I said, turn this um, video effects Snapchat on. And they did, and this guy had a chicken on his head and a cat on his head, yeah. At least we had a laugh for one minute of today. It was a heavy meeting. So um, I had a, a polar bear hugging me during the meeting, and it was a bit, a bit of fun, a bit of stupidness. Anyway, to find it, you have to go into three dots, video effects, takes a little while, didn't see it straight away, and Snapchat, there it is. So hopefully you can uh, enjoy tomorrow with a little bit of fun doing that. Now, if you enjoyed that, that's great. We have plenty of uh, videos there. If I missed any news, throw it down there in the comments. If you disagree with anything I said, throw it down there. We always like to learn. This is Adam Kogan signing off for SSWTV. TV.